This is the Cambridge English First listening test. Test eight. I am going to give you the instructions for this test. I shall introduce each part of the test, and give you time to look at the questions. At the start of each piece, you will hear this sound. You will hear each piece twice. Remember, while you are listening, write your answers on the question paper. You will have five minutes at the end of the test to copy your answers onto the separate answer sheet. There will now be a pause. Please ask any questions now, because you must not speak during the test. Now open your question paper and look at part one. You will hear people talking in eight different situations. For questions one to eight, choose the best answer: A, B, or C. Question one. You hear two people talking about some music they're listening to. Oh, I love this song by the Fools. Do you? I find it a bit sad. Yeah, I know what you mean. I do normally like music that's a bit more light-hearted, but this particular one still works for me. My parents always played upbeat stuff by the Fools at home, so when I first heard this track, it came as a bit of a surprise. I can imagine. It's quite different from their usual style. No one in my family plays a musical instrument. But I actually started teaching myself the guitar because I wanted to be able to play this. And can you? Not yet. I'll be really pleased when I can. Oh, I love this song by the Fools. Do you? I find it a bit sad. Yeah, I know what you mean. I do normally like music that's a bit more light-hearted, but this particular one still works for me. My parents always played upbeat stuff by the Fools at home. So when I first heard this track, it came as a bit of a surprise. I can imagine. It's quite different from their usual style. No one in my family plays a musical instrument, but I actually started teaching myself the guitar because I wanted to be able to play this. And can you? Not yet. I'll be really pleased when I can. Question two: You hear part of a radio program in which a teacher is talking about her own education. I was educated in quite a posh and rather expensive school, really. So expectations for pupils were high, and that put us under pressure a bit. Mind you, I wouldn't have got down to it and done much otherwise, and certainly wouldn't have gone to university. Perhaps that's why I've found my niche in trying to make sure that everyone gets the kind of education that allows them to realise their full potential in life. Teaching wasn't my first career choice, though. I think colleagues I worked with were amazed when I made the switch from industry. But I haven't looked back since I did it. I was educated in quite a posh and rather expensive school, really. So expectations for pupils were high, and that put us under pressure a bit. Mind you, I wouldn't have got down to it and done much otherwise, and certainly wouldn't have gone to university. Perhaps that's why I've found my niche in trying to make sure that everyone gets the kind of education that allows them to realise their full potential in life. Teaching wasn't my first career choice, though. I think colleagues I worked with were amazed when I made the switch from industry, but I haven't looked back since I did it. Question three: You hear a woman telling a friend about a new job she has. How are you getting on with your new job in the cafe? Overall, enjoying it a lot. The owners are a husband and wife, and he does the cooking downstairs while she's in charge in the cafe. At times, they're quite casual and laid back, and at others, they get really stressed out, like when you make a mistake or when it gets really full at lunchtime. 
They seem to think I'm a master of all trades and that I know how to repair their faulty coffee machine, which is much too technical for me. Anyway, I mustn't grumble, and at least the customers have been nice so far, with a few exceptions who were just rather fussy for my liking. How are you getting on with your new job in the cafe? Overall, enjoying it a lot. The owners are a husband and wife, and he does the cooking downstairs while she's in charge in the cafe. At times they're quite casual and laid back, and at others they get really stressed out, like when you make a mistake or when it gets really full at lunchtime. They seem to think I'm a master of all trades and that I know how to repair their faulty coffee machine, which is much too technical for me. Anyway, I mustn't grumble, and at least the customers have been nice so far, with a few exceptions who were just rather fussy for my liking. Question 4. You hear two students talking about an architecture course. I'm so glad I chose architecture, aren't you? Yeah, the course is great, but sometimes I feel I can't keep up. We always have so much work to do. I think it's about right, personally. And anyway, the teachers explain everything brilliantly. I don't think I've ever learnt so much in such a short time, and it is because of them, that's true. What do you think of the other students? Some of them have fantastic ideas, don't they? Oh, they produce good work, because they're on such an inspiring course. I'm not sure how they'd perform in a different environment, though. Yeah, you may be right. Anyway, I'm very happy. I'm so glad I chose architecture, aren't you? Yeah, the course is great, but sometimes I feel I can't keep up. We always have so much work to do. I think it's about right, personally. And anyway, the teachers explain everything brilliantly. I don't think I've ever learnt so much in such a short time, and it is because of them, that's true. What do you think of the other students? Some of them have fantastic ideas, don't they? Oh, they produce good work, because they're on such an inspiring course. I'm not sure how they'd perform in a different environment, though. Yeah, you may be right. Anyway, I'm very happy. Question 5. You hear two students talking about the chemistry laboratories at their college. Did you know they're going to do up the chemistry labs next month? No, I didn't. Bit weird, isn't it? I mean, some work was done on them last year and they're OK, I think. Well, I still think they could do with a coat of paint. The main thing, I'd say, is that there are just so many of us wanting to use them this year. And they're too crowded. Yeah, true. And I also think they should replace some of the equipment, don't you? Well, a lot of what they have is pretty much state-of-the-art, so I wouldn't say that's much of a problem. Mm, maybe you're right. Did you know they're going to do up the chemistry labs next month? No, I didn't. Bit weird, isn't it? I mean, some work was done on them last year and they're OK, I think. Well, I still think they could do with a coat of paint. The main thing, I'd say, is that there are just so many of us wanting to use them this year. And they're too crowded. Yeah, true. And I also think they should replace some of the equipment, don't you? Well, a lot of what they have is pretty much state-of-the-art, so I wouldn't say that's much of a problem. Mm, maybe you're right. Question 6. You hear a woman talking about a place she used to visit as a child. Bradworth is a small seaside town, and visits there were a huge part of my childhood. I have many fond memories of sailing off the coast, watching the seals, walking barefoot in the beautiful white sand, and having sand fights with the other children. I remember all the parents getting together for picnics, too. I've had lots of exotic vacations since then, in the most amazing places, but nothing to compare with those childhood memories. I'd love to go back, but it wouldn't be the same anymore, and I'd rather hang on to those wonderful childhood memories. Bradworth is a small seaside town, and visits there were a huge part of my childhood. I have many fond memories of sailing off the coast, watching the seals, walking barefoot in the beautiful white sand, 
and having sand fights with the other children. I remember all the parents getting together for picnics, too. I've had lots of exotic vacations since then, in the most amazing places, but nothing to compare with those childhood memories. I'd love to go back, but it wouldn't be the same anymore, and I'd rather hang on to those wonderful childhood memories. Question 7. You hear a runner telling his friend about a sports injury he has. So the injury is making slow progress, I'm afraid. Oh, dear. Yes. I went back to the doctor and my lower leg is still swollen. The strange thing is, apparently it actually needs a bit of exercise in order to get the blood flowing to it so that it can heal. So things like swimming and cycling are fine, although even with those I shouldn't push it. But even a bit of running is OK, provided I run on soft surfaces. Then I've also been given some particular movements to do in front of a mirror, which will stimulate the injured area in the right way. So the injury is making slow progress, I'm afraid. Oh dear. Yes. I went back to the doctor and my lower leg is still swollen. The strange thing is, apparently it actually needs a bit of exercise in order to get the blood flowing to it so that it can heal. So things like swimming and cycling are fine, although even with those I shouldn't push it. But even a bit of running is OK, provided I run on soft surfaces. Then I've also been given some particular movements to do in front of a mirror, which will stimulate the injured area in the right way. Question 8. You hear a woman talking about her favourite radio programme. I listen to a lot of stuff on the radio, and I love hearing about stories of normal people leading normal lives. For several years now, I've been really into a programme called Your Turn, where people basically tell a story from their own life. Sometimes these stories can be quite gripping and emotional, and at other times they can pass you by. But anyway, I love having it on in the background while I'm working. It's a really clever idea, actually. The stories have to be true and they're told, not read, but told, and they're delivered in front of a live audience. Really effective. I listen to a lot of stuff on the radio, and I love hearing about stories of normal people leading normal lives. For several years now, I've been really into a programme called Your Turn, where people basically tell a story from their own life. Sometimes these stories can be quite gripping and emotional, and at other times they can pass you by. But anyway, I love having it on in the background while I'm working. It's a really clever idea, actually. The stories have to be true, and they're told, not read, but told, and they're delivered in front of a live audience. Really effective. That is the end of part one.